Hey, what's going on you guys? So today, before I even get a chance to shoot, I've got chores to do. Yeah. You know, the joys of home ownership. I have a lawn that needs to be mowed, and I've got to do a little bit of trimming. You know, fun stuff. So, while I'm doing that, I want you guys to sit back, grab something nice and cool to drink, watch me work then we'll go shoot there's some uh, weather moving in this evening there's a chance for thunderstorms I don't know that it'll arrive here it definitely won't arrive here in time for today's vlog post but um, if it does show up tonight not too late because I do get up at like I don't know 440 in the morning if it does get here early enough for me to get out and shoot the approaching storm, then I'm definitely bringing you guys along for the ride, and it'll show up in probably tomorrow's vlog post. If it shows up in the middle of the night, I'm sleeping. Sorry. So, yeah, let me get back to driving, get myself home, do a little bit of yard work, then we'll go find something to shoot. Sit tight. Hey, what's going on you guys so I have gotten my uh, yard work done and decided that I really didn't want to take off and go anywhere to shoot so I figured it would be a good time to cover something that I get a lot of questions about and that is shooting macro because I love to shoot macro and one of the questions that I get is from people who own the 60 millimeter f 2.8 macro they ask you know how come I can't get shots that are super sharp you know they say I've seen some of your photos and they're like crazy sharp and mine aren't um, so let's address that today uh, things that I'm gonna be using today might be using a tripod but in all honesty a lot of the macro shots that I do are handheld so not always a necessity for me what is a necessity obviously uh, shooting with an EM1 that's gripped and I've got the 60 millimeter macro already attached. I've got the lens hood on it. Not a necessity, but depending on where the sun is going to be at in your shots, there's a potential that you might want the hood on. Uh, a must have, in my mind, unless it's like insanely sunny out, is a flash. Uh, FL600R is what I'm using here. And I'm going to use this just because. I can shoot TTL so it meters off of what the lens uh, straight through the lens so the metering comes out correctly uh, you'll see that on my flash I've got velcro I've got the soft side of the velcro on the flash and I've got this really cheap and I've talked about it half a dozen times before it's from a company called Opteca um, and I think I've got one coming from Photodiax. I gotta double check and see if I ever ordered that or not. But this is a flash diffuser. And I've got the rough side of the Velcro attached to this. Why do I have it in that order? Well, when I stick this in my bag and reach in to grab it, I want the soft and fuzzy stuff. I don't want the hard, scratchy stuff. Um, so you can see the way you attach it is just stick the Velcro together. Match it up to your flash now we've got a little soft box here okay other things to use I'm not gonna shoot with this on camera necessarily there are occasions where I might I try to keep it off camera and we'll try to go over that a little bit later when I'm shooting so if I'm doing it off camera how am I triggering uh, two different ways you can do it number one is you can trigger it with the accessory flash that would come with your camera so this is the FL LM3 it's the newer accessory flash that comes with like the uh, I think the EM5 Mark II comes with this one um, 
and the Pen F I believe comes with this one as well. Or another option is this is the FL CB05. Gotta love all these numbers and letters and acronyms and what have you. Flash cable. Uh, you could probably get a generic equivalent somewhere, but I stick to the branded stuff for two reasons. Number one, I'm lucky enough to have Olympus send it to me. But uh, number two, you know you're gonna get a more quality product the majority of the time if you're sticking with a branded product. So anything that electricity is traveling through, I I try to stick with the branded stuff. So I don't use like aftermarket batteries, for instance. So that's it. Um, we've got the camera body with the uh, macro lens attached. I've got an accessory flash to put on the hot shoe to wirelessly trigger my FL600R. Or if I didn't have the accessory flash, um, I could use a flash cable. So that's it. That's all you need to get started. I'm going to shut the camera off and set it back up when I get to a spot where there's something to shoot. And sometimes, to be honest with you, that can be the hardest part finding something little to shoot you'd think that it would be easy but i like to shoot bugs and sometimes it's hard to find those little suckers so shutting you off turn you back on when we find something to shoot all right so we're ready to shoot and uh what you didn't see was that i ran into some technical difficulties and i couldn't get my flash to trigger and i was racking my brain you know and i went and grabbed another one of the fl lm3s because I thought maybe the one that I had was bad or something because it wasn't firing. And I went through like every possible combination of flash settings thinking, gosh, what am I missing? And <laughs> it dawned on me, well, the FL LM3 will work with the EM5 Mark II and the Pen F because those are newer cameras that didn't have the accessory port on them. And I'm shooting with an EM1 and the EM1 has the uh, accessory port right under the hot shoe so my faux pas so I had to get an FL LM2 which is designed to work with the EM1 and now we're in business so let me get to the settings that I'm using um, I've got the camera set on fill flash so this flash is just strictly used to trigger the FL 600R uh, aperture priority I'm shooting at um, f11 which in this ambient light is giving me like 1 60th of a second shutter speed. Not very fast, but uh, plenty fast enough to be able to handhold the shot, I think. So for a sense of scale, you know, here's my hand. I'm going to be photographing this little section right here where there is some grass growing. Um, the reason shooting at f11, I want some depth of field of this shot. So one hand holding the camera. Oh, and I've got the um, the 60 millimeter macro on the one to one, which is the highest magnification setting. It's allowing me to get as close as possible to my subject. So right hand holding the camera, left hand holding the flash, and where to position the flash and all of that is just it's subjective. You know, it's going to be based on what gives you the results you like. I always like to kind of start off above and behind the lens hood with my flash and fill in the direction that the lens is facing. I find that that seems to give me results that I like the best. So let me fire off a test shot here. Oh, and another thing too. So everybody says, are you manually focusing or using autofocus? 90 plus percent of the time I am using autofocus. I never have any issues with the Olympus autofocus doing macro work. So that's that. So let me get focus here and get my flash positioned. First shot, do a little bit of chimping. And I think that that is ridiculously razor sharp and there is good depth of field to it. Um, so that shot I will show for you right now on the screen. And I know that this is a YouTube video, but if you're watching it in 1080p, you get an idea of how clear that shot is. Um, also, what crawled up from underneath this little bit of moss was a little, um, a little beetle. And he's kind of nestled in here. And I am going to irritate him and get him to move. There we go. So he's small. It's about the size of my fingernail in width. 
And I'm gonna see if I can get a good shot, good close up shot of him as well. detail in that fire off another shot position reposition the flash a little bit differently yeah pretty stunning so let me take a couple of more shots here he's not very uh active I'm trying to shake him up and he doesn't want to move. I don't blame him. Now, maybe I'll take one more shot and then we'll talk a little bit about focus bracketing and focus stacking. Just lay the flash down on the table and see what I get. I'm gonna focus on this little blade of grass here. Looks kind of stupid. Let me find something different. So I'm rotating my subject around to find a little bit different point of interest on this moss. Okay, there's another kind of plant growing on the moss. Maybe I'll shoot that. See what I get. Not terribly exciting either. I think actually the first beetle shot and the first shot of this grass were probably the most interesting. So those are the ones that I'm gonna share with you. And um, we'll talk a little bit about focus bracketing and focus stacking now. Let me move the camera here. Put it on my goofy mug for a minute. And we'll talk about that. All right, so focus bracketing and focus stacking. Whoa! <laughs> about sent you guys for a ride there. Alright. I'm not sure what more there is to talk about when it comes to those two subjects. Um, other than the fact that just trust in the camera. Um, I guess maybe, I guess maybe I can talk a little bit about um, let me get set up here first for it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about bracketing on, on. So I was looking, I actually had to go into the menu to find the term for it. I know what it is, but what, I couldn't remember what it was called. It's the focus differential. So what's the focus differential? It's really simple concept. It is the spacing in between the shots. So. Think of it this way, um, you set the focus differential to five, which is the middle of the road. Um, the spacing, let me let me change that, I'm gonna say that. If you set it to a higher number, it's gonna be a larger spacing in between shots or a larger range of distance that the focus travels in between shots. Um, so when and where to use that, this is something I think a lot of people haven't quite figured out yet. Um, the way that I use it and the way that I think that I've gotten the best results is to think of it this way. If you're shooting more wide open, we'll say f2.8 with this lens, you want to set your focus differential below 5. And the reason being because your depth of field is really narrow at f2.8. And if you had the differential set to a higher number, you're going to end up moving your focus out beyond that initial area of focus from that first frame, if that makes sense. Whereas if you were shooting at like f11, you've got a deeper depth of field, okay? So you can set that differential to travel further out along that depth of field or that um, focal plane before it takes the next shot. The reason being that when you go to stack those images in Photoshop or um, Helicon Focus or something like that, you want to have overlap of in-focus areas so that the software knows how to blend them together. If you had we'll say you know your first region is you know you've got this focal plane right here but then your next shot is just outside of that you're going to have this band of out of focus area 
the software is not going to understand how to blend those together and you're going to get these murky areas throughout your image um, so it just doesn't stack as well that way so simple rule of thumb um, the bigger your f-stop larger the number at an f-stop the more you can adjust that focus differential up so when i'm shooting it we'll say f11 i set my focus differential to like seven um and it's a it's a trial and error thing you know basically but i know that if i'm shooting wide open at f 2.8 with the macro i usually have focus differential set down to two and i think i've gotten the best results that way so hopefully that answers a common question that people have about um using the focus stacking or sorry the focus bracketing stacking just takes care of it, it presets the differential based on the f-stop that you've got your lens at it takes the thought out of it be kind of cool if it showed you what it was doing though so i wouldn't have had to walk through this everybody would be like oh i know how that works but it's not quite so clear sometimes um so the sharpness thing like i said initial questions that i get from a lot of people are how do you get an image sharp there's really not a whole lot that i'm doing i've got decent technique at holding the camera so when i'm holding the camera my arms and you've probably heard this a million times my elbows are kind of tucked in at my sides I pull the camera right up to my eye and I'm actually pushing it up against my forehead. So I'm like snugged up and really tight in a ball here, not able to move a whole lot. I'm trusting the uh, wood duck just landed in the trees behind me <laughs> um, or in front of me. I get sidetracked so easy. <laughs> um, okay, back to what I was saying. So. The image stabilization in the camera is phenomenal. Like I said, I was just shooting this at 1 60th of a second. There will be links to the images on Flickr below in the description so you can see just how how sharp they turned out handheld at a 60th of a second. If you feel like you're not stable enough or steady enough and your subject is not moving and it's stationary, then throw it on a tripod and do it that way. Um, set the timer on your camera for like a 12 second timer if you've got the time to do it. That way everything is still and not moving. And you can also set the anti-shock delay on your camera as well. And so basically you just wanna go down to, um, well you can use a super control panel, but basically you're gonna go where you would go to get to uh, sequential shooting and silent shutter mode. Just look for the one that shows the frame with the little diamond next to it. That's your, uh, your anti-shock. So basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna open up the curtain waits just a second and then it takes the photo so there's no movement going on inside the camera it's another way to ensure a very um a very stable shot uh and that's it i mean there's really there's really not a lot to it and i think that maybe i think maybe some of the issues some people have with not getting a sharp enough shot just comes down to one of two things you're either not stable in how you're holding the camera which um if you trust in the image stabilization and you just hold the camera like I said up against your eye push it right back up against your eye elbows in at your side nice and tight and just take a nice slow breath and then barely push the shutter down and get one of these little uh, shutter releases soft shutter release it makes pushing the shutter even easier less likely to move the camera so if you do that, that should help tremendously. And the other thing that I think a lot of people run into that they might not realize is your subject might have moved. Um, and if that happens, there's nothing you can do about it. That's just luck of the draw. Don't shoot macro on a windy day, maybe. Um, and that might resolve that problem. One last thing. It's funny, I, I was just getting ready to wrap up and then it just popped into my head. A third thing that some people might be running into and not realizing it is, you might be stable side to side and up and down, but the minute you rock in forward, you moved your focal plane and you lost focus. So while you feel like you might be nice and steady, you might have just barely moved in. And we're talking millimeters of movement here because your focal plane is so narrow that that's all it takes is you leaning in just a millimeter or two to completely throw your subject out of focus. And I know when I first started shooting macros, that was something that I found myself doing. Um, and that is anticipating the shot and just kind of, you just kind of fall into the shot. And 
that's just one of those things that I worked myself out of doing and how I caught myself doing it was trying to record a macro video and as soon as I hit the record button I found myself just kind of moving into the subject and uh, and losing focus and I'm like well, what's going on and that's what it was I was literally getting into my subject so keep those things in mind um, nice steady technique if you can't do the steady technique you know um, throw it on a tripod as long as your subject is going to be stationary and that's number two your subject needs to be stationary um, it's so easy to get set up for the shot and the wind blows and like I said a couple of millimeters and you're not in focus anymore and the last one is we all like to get into what we're shooting don't fall into it literally and uh, lose focus that way so hopefully that helps this was pretty long I've been recording for 14 minutes here just this portion so and you already had to deal with me mowing the lawn and uh, doing a little weed whacking so been a long vlog post hopefully an educational one that people get some stuff out of um, there'll be links in the comments below or the, the description below to where you can pick up the FL CBO5 flash cable it comes in handy for a lot of things even though I didn't use it just now um, it's indispensable I think for doing macro work and I'll also give a, uh, a link to these uh, soft shutter release buttons I've got one on this this EM1 right here and there's actually one on the EM5 Mark II that's shooting this video right now uh, it makes triggering the shutter a breeze actually so easy that <laughs> until you get used to it you might find yourself going to pull your camera up and shooting pictures on the way up so you guys take care. I'll see you tomorrow. It's been a long vlog post. See ya.